Hey hoppers, I'm Ari the Rabbit Guy, and welcome back to Beanie the Bunny's channel. So today in this video, I'm gonna outline the six questions that are most frequently asked about flying with your rabbit. Hopefully you all caught the video about Beanie's 15 hour flight to California, which got so many comments asking how to fly with a rabbit. So let's get started! So the first and most important question is, should you even fly with your rabbit? But it's really important to think about the impact on the rabbit and the stress that you might be causing your bunny when you fly with him or her. But what you need to understand is in an airplane there's a lot of different environmental factors than what they're used to here on the ground. At 30,000 feet you have a pressurized cabin, you have a chilly environment, you have a lot of different smells and a lot of different noises. So it can be very, very stressful on a rabbit who's not familiar obviously with traveling and flying. So you need to think about you know, how your rabbits might fare. So you wanna think about all the reasons why you wanna bring your rabbit and make sure that they align with the stress that you could be causing and the extra hassle, I should say, of bringing the rabbit along with you. The next question you wanna ask yourself is, what do I need from my vet? And of course, having a clinic that you trust and a vet that you can take your rabbit to for regular checkups is important. Prior to flying, it's even more important that you check with your rabbit's vet to make sure that any existing conditions or, of course, anything that you may not have thought of, you're accounting for before you take your rabbit on a flight. You specifically want to know from your vet whether there's anything in your rabbit's medical history that might make flying for them even more difficult than a regular or healthy rabbit. Stay tuned, of course, to the answers to the next question, which is going to talk a little bit about some of the paperwork and the examinations that potentially your rabbit might need if you're entering specific countries or traveling specific routes. The third question I'm gonna to answer today is which airlines permit flying with rabbits? So this is an important question because every single itinerary could be different. And I wanna talk a little bit about some of the ways that you can research and some of the ways that you might be able to get the permissions and any requirement documents that you may need in order to fly with your rabbit. So first and foremost, it's very important that you know your airline's policies. A lot of people I've talked to have said that they've actually decided on their entire trip based on which airlines were the most lenient or the most open to allowing rabbits to fly. You might want to have a couple options lined up just in case. Uh, sometimes there's certain airlines that are more lenient than others, so you may want to check the different routings for your destination so you can figure out what exactly is at play. It just really depends on where you're living, what country you're at, and where you're trying to go. So definitely researching the airline. So how do you do that? The first thing is you can check policies by Googling the airline's name and pet policy or animal policy. Say Delta Airlines pet policy. You're gonna see a bunch of results come up and you're, you're gonna be able to, to research exactly what the airline's policies are for flying with your rabbit. Some airlines, for example, have very, very strict policies about types of pets, where they can fly, which cabin, can they be under the seat, can they, do they uh, have to go under the plane, um, in the you know, baggage compartment, uh, things like that. It's extremely important to remember how delicate and fragile rabbits can be. Therefore, do not allow them to fly in the cargo under the plane, by any means. That's my number one recommendation to you. Many people need their pets for emotional support, and this is called an emotional support animal. And what that means is that they have a letter from a registered health professional stating that they need to fly in the companionship of their rabbit or other type of animal. So this is an option for some people that have those types of requirements, and this will allow, of course, for them to fly right next to their rabbit, bringing them as a uh, under the seat uh, item. Uh, obviously, they're allowed to bring them in the cabin with them, which is very important. If you're flying an international route, it's even more important that you find out the exit and entry countries that you're going to be going in and out of restrictions in terms of bringing in rabbits. The United States, for example, may ask for some documentation that actually shows that the rabbit is in good health and fit to travel. Other countries may require a quarantine period, so it's very, very particular to the individual country. The best thing to do is a search through the Department of Agriculture or um, the equivalent for that country, which covers livestock, animals, plants, vegetables, fruits, etc. All the types of admission of what we call foreign organic uh, items, I guess you can call it, um, into that country. So search for sort, sort of like a Ministry of Agriculture or you know Department of Agriculture, some sort of uh, governing body for that country that you're going to be entering in with your rabbit. 
um, and make sure that you're able to contact them well ahead of time. Again, a lot of this is planning ahead for all possible scenarios. So the next question I'm gonna answer is, what gear do I need to bring with me to ensure a smooth flight? First and foremost, this is a pet carrier. Is this the bag you're taking on the plane with you today? Yeah, so my rabbit is in here and I, I know, have I see, here. I need to scan this bag. And what's great and unique about this carrier is that it opens from three sides. So you have the ability to open it and of course you can collapse it when it's not in use. So you can take down the sides and of course I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. Um, this carrier also has both straps like this as well as a shoulder strap so that you can carry it easily with the rest of your luggage through the airport. What's really great about this particular carrier that I recommend is that it has a small balcony, I like to call it, which allows the rabbit to actually stretch out so when you're in a place where you can open this up, the rabbit actually has a lot more space this way to lay down um, flat. So if your rabbit likes to stretch out, that's perfect. The next thing you wanna have on hand is a syringe. Again, you have to think about all your rabbit's needs. What are they gonna need in order to stay comfortable throughout the journey? And the number one thing that people forget about is hydration. So just like you become very thirsty when you're traveling, especially on an airplane, your rabbit is going to need water as well. They may not take to their traditional ways of drinking water, whether that's through a bottle or whether that's through the recommended you know, ceramic bowl where your rabbit has access to fresh water throughout the day. So you're gonna probably need to give them water and administer it in a syringe. This is a very basic syringe. What's great about this one is that it's got a fairly big capacity. It's a 20 milliliter syringe, but it also has a very small end tip, which means that you can easily insert it into your rabbit's mouth without it spilling all over the place and just give them the water slowly. And obviously don't force them, but make sure that they are drinking. So be assertive because they're probably not gonna enjoy initially drinking out of a syringe so much. Another option if your rabbit is really stubborn or challenged with drinking out of a syringe is to take the fresh veggies, which of course are another one of the tips for the gear that I want you to bring with you, which is an ample supply of your rabbit's staple diet, which should be fresh vegetables and hay. So on top of your fresh veggies, before you give them to your rabbit during flight, you can sprinkle some water so that they have a little bit of an additional amount of water intake that they're gonna get during the flight. Remember, if your rabbit is during the flight not so uh, willing to drink or maybe a little bit seems spooked by things, that's very normal. So just try to be smart and keep them calm throughout the flight. Um, some rabbits will do better on planes, some won't. It's just a matter of their personality, um, you know, any issues that they might be having, uh, noises, smells, there's a lot going on for them. So try to keep them hydrated, try to give them regular food. Another piece of gear that you're gonna to wanna to consider is bringing a small metal tray. I recommend a roasting tray actually, which is one of the disposable trays that you can get um, to maybe like cook with or whatnot um, that will actually fit inside of your pet carrier. So what's really important here is that you're able to lay out with either a pet pad or perhaps um, some litter that we talked about in our last video, the litter training video, um, that you can actually allow your rabbit to go in and do their business inside of the pet carrier. Now I know this is seemingly a little bit easier said than done, and some rabbits will be more interested in eating their hay and sitting in their litter box than others. So make sure that you have a liner of a towel or something else that you don't mind throwing away that's soft so that in case your rabbit does urinate on top of their carrier, it doesn't soak into the bottom of the airplane and it keeps the smell out. And of course, um, you know, something that you don't mind throwing away um, if it gets messy, you know, during the flight. Now that you have your gear, now that you know where you're going, now it's important to say, what do I do during the flight in order to make sure that my rabbit stays safe, secure, healthy, and comfortable throughout the journey? Number one is once you get to and from the airport, make sure that that part of your journey is accounted for. So think about things like, you know, what kind of ground transportation am I gonna take? How am I gonna make sure that the rabbit has ample time to stretch out between, um, you know, different legs of the journey, things like that. But during the flight itself, what we're gonna do is we're going to first get on the plane and if it's possible to board early, that would be ideal. A lot of people will be asking you, can I see your rabbit or what's in that bag or what's in that carrier? Um, you might want to avoid making it too obvious that you actually have a rabbit inside your carrier because there might be a lot of people that will wanna pet the rabbit and ask questions and that might not be the right time to do it there during a uh, stressful journey that you're about to take. 
So as you board the plane, make sure to find your seat and, and ensure that your rabbit carrier will fit under that particular seat. If there's of course any questions, you can ask the flight attendant, but first and foremost, always check on your rabbit as you put them under the seat and make sure there's nothing sharp or nobody kicking under that seat so that everything is you know, in place and the rabbit is going to be as safe and secure as possible. Before takeoff, also have accessible your vegetables, your hay, all your water, everything else that we talked about so that you can administer those things uh, easily uh, throughout the flight. I recommend checking on your rabbit every hour or two. Um, the best, if possible, is to open up the rabbit carrier and try to pet your rabbit so to make sure that they feel comfortable. Talk to them, make sure that they're safe and stowed during those points where you're required to be in your seat with your seatbelt fastened. Right before landing, of course, you're gonna also wanna make sure that your rabbit is secure under the seat. As you're getting off the plane, also the same thing applies. Make sure that you're holding the carrier in a comfortable way so that you're not jerking it around from side to side and your rabbit's not trying to hold on for his or her dear life. Finally, how do I prepare for a soft landing? So now that you've made it finally to your destination, it's really important to think about everything you're gonna need in order for your rabbit to be comfortable at your new location. Whether you've moved and you've actually, this is a relocation for you, or if you're just temporarily visiting somebody or on a temporary trip, you have to think about the location that you're going to be staying at. Is this location already bunny proof or bunny friendly? And do you have the ample habitat for your rabbit in, uh, prepared ahead of time? So one of the tips I'm gonna give you is, you can actually send a portable cage um, to your friend ahead of time if you're staying, let's say, with a friend or at a hotel that may not have a rabbit cage. So you're gonna to wanna to think about all the things that your rabbit's gonna to need to feel like home as much as they possibly can during their stay. One of my pro tips that I definitely wanna give you is when you enter a new space that your rabbit is going to be staying in, whether it's for a minute, an hour, a day, or a year, it's critical that you scan and bunny-proof that space for any potential dangers to your rabbit. Number one could be places where they could easily escape. For example, in some older structures, there might be an area near a radiator or a vent that actually has an opening wide enough that your rabbit could squeeze through it and try to escape the, that room. Thirdly, of course, is are there cables? Is there areas where the rabbit could easily chew? So some people like to purchase a pet corral or fencing, similar to what you could um, give like a playpen for a dog or even for a baby for that matter, and have your rabbit housed in there. That way you have a 360 degree view of your rabbit, but he or she still has enough room to run around, stretch out, use their litter box, all that sort of thing. So don't forget, of course, you're gonna need all of the comforts of home. So if you're gonna bring your litter box, you're gonna need to have that set up. You're gonna need uh, either litter or pet pads, ample number for the amount of days. So I've also told people that sometimes it's just as easy to um, buy these things and actually have them shipped ahead of time. Maybe you wanna um, purchase you know, a litter box and some pet pads, just enough for that time that you're gonna be away. And that way you have all those things waiting for you at your destination location. And when you get there, you can simply make your rabbit feel as comfortable as possible. But the number one thing is thinking about how long you're gonna be there and how many supplies, how much supplies, how many things you're gonna need. Now fresh vegetables and fruits, of course, are important. So that's another consideration that we need to have. Okay, Hopper, so now that I've answered your six most important questions about flying with your rabbit, I'd love your feedback and for you to continue the conversation in the comments below. So hopefully the answers to these questions really helped you out with preparing for flying with your rabbit. Are there certain tips, tricks, or hacks that I didn't cover today that you wanna share with Beanie the Bunny's rabbit community? Well, if so, leave them in the comments below. Maybe you can help someone else have a smoother journey. Whether it's an airline that seems to be in particular very rabbit friendly, or maybe a great way to pack supplies, all of those things, we'd love to hear from you in the comments. So be sure to subscribe to Beanie the Bunny for more bunny tips videos, as well as all the laughing, all the fun, and all the hilarious tricks that Beanie the Bunny does. Safe travels, hoppers! Beanie.